I'm Belief. I'm Kijan Haynes. And I am Jasim Marouk with Sport. Let's tell you what's making the news tonight. Despite public opposition, proposed residential rate increase remains, but commercial and industrial customers shown some mercy. Maloney community shocked over the abandonment of two young children. Tonight, we learn more about the family circumstances. Man charged with attempted murder of a prison officer and a young girl. And coming up in sport, Nigel Paul is forced to look for another path to the Olympic Games following a unanimous defeat in his Pan Am opener. The new electricity rates have been proposed and it sees an increase for residential customers but an ease up for commercial and industrial users. Akash Samaru tells us why the Regulated Industries Commission made this decision. He also uses his own electricity bill to explain the formula to calculate your residential rate increase. With a bi-monthly consumption of 3,113 kilowatt hours, it gave me a total of $1,218.43. Now, since they're moving to a monthly billing system, let's cut that in half. That means around 1,557 kilowatt hours costs me around $609. Now, using the new rate, which is separated by tiers, the first 200 kilowatt hours used has a rate of 28 cents per kilowatt. Therefore, 200 by 28 cents gives me $56. And the next tier takes us to 200 to 700 kilowatt hours. That covers the next 500 kilowatts, and the range for that tier is 40 cents per kilowatt. Therefore, 500 by 40 cents gives us $200. The same principle applies for the third tier of 700 to 1400 kilowatts. That covers my next 700 kilowatts of use. Therefore, 700 by the new rate of 54 cents, that gives me $378. And that takes me into the fourth tier of over 1,400 kilowatt hours. And using that tier's rate, it will work out to around $106.76. Stay with me now. We add all of that, and it leaves me with $740.76. However, I must add the $7.50 customer fee up from $6.00. And then, of course, 12.5% VAT, and that takes me now to $841.76 monthly as my new rate. That means my monthly bill under these new rates, given my consumption, moves from $609 to $841.76, representing an increase of 38% for my bill. In fact, the rates announced today represent the maximum that TNT can charge, meaning the utility company could actually charge less if they want, but definitely not more. Now, it's interesting to note that these residential rate increases were what were proposed during the consultation process, meaning despite public pushback, nothing changed. However, certain categories of commercial and industrial rates were actually decreased by 9 to 17 percent. Now, the RIC explains to us why they were able to benefit from a decrease. In that group, we have small businesses, we have persons who employ, who create a lot of employment in the country, and we really wanted to ensure that they remain sustainable. Now remember the crux of the increase is TNTEC's need for additional revenue to service a $5 billion debt it owes to the NGC. CNC3 News asked how much of an impact will this increase have for TNTEC? Their annual revenue was something like $3.2 billion. And in the first year, we proposed that they would get something like $4.8 billion. So that is a 50% increase. The RIC said annual tariff adjustment exercises will be conducted until 2027 to consider TNTEX compliance, financial performance, and if new rates should be applied. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News. Thank you, Akash. Meanwhile, the TNT Chamber is urging the government to understand that on top of the rate increase, the public is also battling with increased fuel prices, property tax, and overall inflation. The Chamber said if applied simultaneously, this can compound cost of living expenses and lead to negative impacts and unnecessary hardships. Meanwhile, economist Dr. Valmiki Arjun believes the RIC should have done its job over the years and reviewed the rates every five years years. Dr. Arjun said in that way increases would have been small and incremental rather than what has been proposed today. He said these rate increases negates the raise in minimum wage. Those in the lower income brackets um, qualifying for the minimum wage should enjoy, or was supposed to enjoy 
an increase in their purchasing power. But now, at the very least, part of that increase in their purchasing power is going to be eroded by the increase in the, in the residential rates. Dr. Arjun said over 220,000 employees earn less than $6,000 a month, and this will exacerbate financial inequality in the country. Now, some customers are disappointed in the RIC's proposal to TN Tech to bill customers monthly as opposed to bi-monthly. Today, we asked people how they felt about today's announcement. I think every two months makes sense. Uh, people usually they already have it in their head, like yeah, okay, every two months I had this to pay, that to pay, I already worked out. For it to be every month, yeah, it's, it's just too much of a hassle. So it doesn't matter, monthly, bi-monthly, and then or I see like it's only 20 cents it going to buy. So it, 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 to me that would make, wouldn't make a difference. I find, you know, the, the one month is unfair. I will support it two months, you know what I mean, because it was already there from the start, people get accustomed to it. Why change it from two months to one month? All right, it just puts people more under pressure. It's more comfortable to pay every two months than every month. Depends on the quality of service that is delivered and whether it is reliable. So I think you have to tie the cost and the timing of the cost to the actual quality of service that we receive. And once you get that balance right, I'm all in support of it. I don't support that. The residents of Salmon Drive, Maloney, are relieved that two toddlers are now in state's care after they were found in a dilapidated house in the neighborhood. The three-year-old boy and two-year-old girl were found by police as they were playing on the road outside the structure in which they were living. The siblings remain in the care of the Children's Authority. Now, Shane Superville spoke with the residents who expressed their shock and concern over the incident. Yes, I went over and I saw him once a rat I and I ended up going. A small glimpse into the squalid conditions where two toddlers lived with their father on Jordan Trace off Salmon Drive, Maloney. The three-year-old boy and two-year-old girl were found by police on patrol on Monday night and have since been removed from the home. They are now in the custody of the Children's Authority. When CNC3 News visited the neighborhood on Thursday, one resident said the father of the children suffers with a developmental disability but has tried to assist him with money and food. And I the one who's be there, you know, them have nothing to eat. I have to give them this, give them this, give them money, give them... Oh. Despite these concerns, the neighbor could not say why a report was never lodged to the authorities. It was never taken care of. Anybody ever report that to the police? No, no. How come? Me, yeah, no. Officers of the Maloney CID also visited the house to try and speak with the father of the children, who is still believed to be living there. He was not at home when the officers visited, but neighbors reported seeing him in the area earlier that morning. Another longtime resident, Kalon Musadin, said he first learned of the situation on the news and was shocked to hear that something so strange happened in his own neighborhood. I feel real bad to know that. Look, I don't have no children and I have a big house. And people who are children don't have nothing. Responding to CNC3 via WhatsApp, MP for Aruka Maloney, Camille robinson Regis described these conditions as horrific. She says this was clearly a family in crisis and assured that the necessary support is being extended to the relatives. Amidst the shock and concern, Red Hill residents are still hoping that the children can receive the best care possible. Shane Superville, CNC3 News. Switching gears now, the Law Association is supporting the Court of Appeals ruling in the Marcia Ayers Caesar case. However, LATS Media released today stopped short of making any definitive calls for action, but emphasized the importance of safeguarding judicial independence. The association's statement follows a unanimous decision by appeal court judges in the matter. When the case came up for hearing on October 12th, three judges upheld Ayers Caesar's appeal, stating she was pressured into resigning as a high court judge in 2017. Noting that the JLSC is the most senior of all service commissions since it is chaired by the Chief Justice, the LAT said it must ensure that appropriate candidates are selected and that judges are protected from anything which may amount to an incursion on the independent discharge of their duties. No word yet on whether the state will appeal the ruling at the Privy Council. But still to come in the news, police officer who legally challenged the release of his mugshot wins his case against the police service. Four days into its planned shutdown, Andy Salcott says only a few communities in South are affected. Coming up in sport, Carrier and Otley shine as TNT Red Force registers its first win of this year's Super 50 Cup.
It started with the best and turned into VO Fest, the Value Optical Frame Festival 2023. Exactly where you want to be. The feature event for the year is here. Feel your best at VO Fest. 33 and a third percent off frames and 10% off lenses. Look your best at VO Fest. Promotion ends November 5th. All access passes now available. Visit valueoptical.com today. Value Optical, expert care for your eyes. The countdown is on for the greatest carnival weekend in the world. It's time for Tobago Carnival. Friday, October 27th. It's Sunday 29th. Come witness the release of the revelry and the ritual of the road in Tobago. This, this is our we carnival. carnival. This is our we yeah. carnival. It's time for Tobago Carnival. Ready yourself for the ritual of the road. Log on to welcometobago.com for more details. Tobago Carnival. Friday, October 27th. It's Sunday 29th. Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is calling on the Port of Spain City Corporation to work on its disaster management plan. This call follows yesterday's street filling, which caused hundreds of commuters to be stuck in hours long gridlock around the capital. Speaking to CNC3 News today, head of the Port of Spain Division, Senior Superintendent Ali Mohammed, said even his officers had difficulty getting through the traffic to be able to direct vehicles. He said getting in contact with the Minister of Works and Transport, Rohan Sinanan, yesterday also proved difficult and it wasn't until late yesterday evening that he received the green light for light motor vehicles to access the priority bus route all the way back in 2010 the odpm said it was nearing completion of an evacuation plan for the nation's capital we need to have an evacuation plan for port of spain itself because um based on what i saw yesterday we have nothing in place I have a number of people who have control, but due to the traffic congestion, there is very little we could have done. We could not have access to areas via vehicles, so hence the reason they would have had to walk. Attempts to contact Port of Spain Mayor Chinua Allen were unsuccessful. Well, four days into the Salcott's planned shutdown, and WASA is confident that its mitigation plan has been highly successful. WASA's acting CEO Kelvin Romain says rotation schedules have so far been about 80% successful. At a news conference today, Romain explained that some adjustments will come into effect tomorrow morning. However, he admits there were supplies is supply issues to some areas in South Trinidad. Early morning tomorrow, you would see some of the schedules being adjusted on the extreme side of the system. We did have some, some shortcomings, however, in Faizabad, some parts of Labri, Pluck Road, and San Francisco. But the, I, I want to assure our customers that um, we, we did uh, predict some of those things and, um, and anticipate some of those things, and we are just into suit. Members of the media were taken on a tour of the Salination Company based at the Point Lisa's Industrial Estate. The Salcott Managing Director John Thompson assures that planned works are on schedule. It was nine days, so the first day being ramped down and the last day being ramp up. Uh, at the moment, yes, we're, we're on schedule. Uh, we're still hoping to improve on the schedule. Now, the last day of the shutdown should be October 24th. A 22-year-old Santa Cruz man is remanded into custody, charged with the attempted murder of a prison officer and a young girl. That's not all. He's also been accused of four other offenses. Emmanuel Joseph was charged last night with two counts of attempted murder, possession of a firearm and ammunition to endanger life. The charges stemmed from last week's shooting incident in which prison officer Steve Phipps was shot and wounded during an assassination attempt on the life of a deputy prisons commissioner. Officer Phipps and a 12-year-old girl were injured. Phipps was shot in the torso while the girl sustained a minor, minor wound to the leg. The matter is adjourned to next Tuesday. A police officer is set to receive $70,000 in compensation from the state for his mugshot being disseminated by the TTPS after he was charged with a criminal offense. High Court Judge Nadia Kanglu ordered the compensation for PC Rishi Mohan as she upheld his constitutional lawsuit over the move. In August last year, Mohan was granted $1.8 million bail after being charged alongside a colleague with misbehavior in public office. The officers were alleged to have solicited a bribe to forego 
for prosecuting a criminal offense. In the lawsuit, Mohan claimed that his constitutional right to respect to family life was breached when his photograph was released by the TTPS. He also contended that his right to equality of treatment from a public authority was breached as the TTPS does not release the photographs of all persons who are charged with offenses. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says beyond strengthening the region's security, Canada can play a critical role in representing other CARICOM concerns on an international level. Speaking at the CARICOM Canada Summit today, Dr. Rowley said advocacy for global financial reform was one area that could benefit Caribbean islands. Here's Jesse Ramdeo with more. The curtains have come down on the first CARICOM Canada Summit, which brought up several regional and global matters critical to the territories. After recognizing Canada's role in assisting with regional security through the acquisition of Border Patrol vessels, police training and cyber security, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says further representation can also improve conditions across the islands. One of the things that affect us are uh, uh, arbitrary decision-making and I might go as far as to say disrespect for our interest. So if we do have help in making our case at the appropriate forum, not the least of which are the ones that you're accustomed to, the Bretton Woods institutions who look out for us, then we can benefit from a lot of what Canada can say for us and with us. With turbulence reverberating across the world, Dr. Rowley says the Haitian crisis cannot be taken off the regional radar. Over the years, Haiti has been paralyzed by gang violence, which has left hundreds dead and thousands displaced. As we look at the crisis and we advocate for an intervention of assistance, that that assistance be seen coming from honest brokers and not, in fact, propping up what exists in perpetuity. That in itself poses a danger. In recognizing the significance of the summit, Prime Minister Dr. Rowley suggested that going forward, the meeting among leaders is organized biannually. Questioned about the summit and its outcome, Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau hailed it as a success. We have had a very, very successful uh, three days of conversations, uh, but more than that, uh, we are coming out of this with a concrete uh, plan of action uh, to continue to harness the opportunities and the potential of uh, the friendship between Canada and the Caribbean and our mutual interest in moving forward in the right way together. The launch of the CARICOM Canada Strategic Partnership at the summit fosters the existing relationship between Canada and CARICOM through regular leader, ministerial and senior official level meetings to advance roadmaps for action. Jesse Ramdeo, CNC3 News. The police service is reporting a 24% reduction in serious crimes in the Western Division for the year thus far. Senior Superintendent of the Western Division, Sean Henry, revealed they've recorded reductions in murders, shootings and woundings, kidnappings and various other crimes. However, there's been a 13% increase in sexual offenses such as rape and incest. Also, that an increase in the sexual offenses doesn't necessarily mean that sexual offenses itself is increasing. It could be that more people coming forward to report these offenses. Meanwhile, of all the illegal firearms seized for 2023 so far, 70 were recovered in the Western Division, which is more than last year's figure. The division is urging communities to create their own watch groups to ensure they do not become soft targets. Now, police use People use social media for all sorts of reasons, but a Valencia man is accused of using his online account to sell narcotics. After receiving a tip-off, police arrested the 23-year-old. Officers were previously alerted to a person using a social media platform to sell illegal drugs. They soon identified a 23-year-old man from Valencia as a user of the social media account. With a warrant in hand, officers searched the man's home and found a quantity of marijuana plants and various high-grade marijuana seeds. They also found an assortment of packaging with various labels and branding, a pack containing several colored tablets were also seized, which was sent for testing. The suspect was subsequently arrested and taken to the Sangre Grande police station.
Now, the student seen in a social media video verbally abusing a teacher has been expelled, but the Education Ministry says the teenager will now get the necessary support. Education Minister Dr. Nian gatsby Dolly said the decision was a last resort and requests for additional support from various ministries have been made for this teen and her family. Meanwhile, clinical psychologist Sarah Suban believes while the family needs time to internalize the situation, these agencies must act soon to avoid recurrence or worsening of behavior. Early intervention is very important and key for any kind of behavioral change to occur and for people to get the help that they really need. Because if you let time pass by, then persons may not be as inclined to access that help because the intensity of the situation will dissipate. And I also think the family needs time to process the implications of the expulsion because this could be far-reaching. The clinical psychologist added that the negative comments from members of the public will not help the student. Still to come in the news. We're often chided for not having a big recycling culture. Tonight, Ryan Beichu tells us it's a problem all around the world. A high premium on quality, prices and service. The main attributes of Southern Food Basket Marketplace Point Fortin. A universe of variety with something for every shopper. Come to where the deals are bigger and better, where you shop in comfort. Southern Food Basket Marketplace, now serving with pride, Point Fortin and environs. Call CW Interiors to get your free consultation on custom fabricated blinds and shades. Choose unique classic or modern designs, functional for privacy and controlled natural lighting in your room. You can even have them motorized for extra comfort and convenience too. Are you ready to get measured? Call CW Interiors, making quality affordable. Visit cwinteriors.com for more. Get beauty from within and keep that glowing and ageless look with antioxidant for your skin. Antioxidant fights signs of aging, reduces acne, smooths out fine lines and reduces the appearance of age spots. Add Antoxo 4 to your skincare routine. Distributed by Qualcor International Limited. Available at pharmacies nationwide. Attention all bakers, doubles vendors, and roti makers. Try our high-quality bromate-free, all-purpose, and whole wheat flour. Low price and conveniently packaged in 2 pounds, 2 kg, 10 kg, and 25 kg bags. For wholesale and retail prices, contact Chiquisho Limited at 665-3336 or 4808715. Or visit us at Warrenville Canopia. Chiquisho Limited. Quality you can trust. try to make sure I have a, a one or two extra bottle of Omega XL, strong heart, probiotics, um, the turmeric. I can say I use this product and it works on me. We've got 101 reasons for you to shop at Ports. Reason 100, save up to 60% on selected items store-wide. Save on select fridges, stoves, washers, smart TVs, and more. Get what you want today with no cash and make your first payment in 90 days. So there are 101 reasons to shop at Ports. Ports, bringing value home. Promotion runs from September 26th. Conditions apply. Food Basket Arima, Chamflay and Shagwanas. Shop and save big this month end with Food Basket Family Deals. 5 pound minced beef, $99. 10 kg flour, $74.95. 8 kg rice, $69.95. Big deal, 4 litre oil, $69.95. Food Basket is all about the family and great deals. 2 bale toilet paper, $89.95. 8 pound turkey drumstick, $99. 11 pound Tyson leg quarter, $79.95. Food Basket it's Arima, Chamfle, and Chagonas. What should your parents use to fight inflammation? Omega XL. Oh, you can't tell me, boy. What do you think I should take, babe? My mommy and daddy should use Omega XL to fight inflammation. <laughs> 
Spirits Bright Ideas Festival of Discount Sale. Illuminate your home with up to 75% off selected items. Enjoy unbeatable deals. 10 to 30% off ornaments. 30% off selected linens and curtains. 25 to 50% off selected flowers. 25% off lamps, clocks, and mirrors. 25% off as seen on TV items. 50% off paintings. 30% off selected bakeware, dinner sets, and kitchenware. 25 to 50% off religious ornaments. 75% off lights and chandeliers. But hurry, the Festival of Discount Sale is here for a limited time only. Bright Ideas, located at Point Fortin, Princess Town, Rio Claro, Maribel, or Gulf City Mall, and coming soon to Curep. Bright Ideas, bringing happiness home. Do you need a coronary angiogram, angioplasty, or stent? At Medical Associates Hospital, we have the most experienced team of general and interventional cardiologists who provide quality care to our patients. Schedule your appointment today, 750-2278. Medical Associates Hospital, number one healthcare for the entire family. leading fast food chains saw an uptick in sales of cold drinks during the recent heat wave. And Ian Gooding Edger reports an increase in TNT visitors to Barbados. He explains it's largely attributed to travel expansion. Andrea Perez Sobas tells us more in tonight's Business Watch. Business Watch, brought to you by End Cash. Scan, pay, done. Rituals Coffee House, Church's Chicken and Pizza Boys saw an uptick in sales with cold drinks during the scorching temperatures this country experienced for the past few months. Speaking at the reopening of the fast food chain's establishment at Shigonis Main Road earlier today, Global Brands Director William Sabger Bood told CNC3 Business Watch the launch of new cold drinks at different locations helped increase the sales. We, we do see some sustainability in that we, we've seen periods of, of, of wet weather or rain and we've still seen a steady rise in our sales or those volumes have stayed steady so we do expect some sustainability there. Also speaking was Melina Suri, marketing manager for Rituals Coffee House who said it was good to reopen at Chagona's main road. She gave an update on what can be expected in the future. So 2024 and 2025 are actually store highlights, new stores, renovations, not only exclusive to Trinidad and Tobago, but throughout the Caribbean as well. A church's chicken is also expected to be open in the Endeavour location soon. More TNT nationals are coming to the island due to an improvement in airlift within the region. Speaking to CNC3 last evening in Barbados at the welcome reception for the Food and Rum Festival, Tourism Minister Ian Gooding Edgehill said the increase in airlift is a positive development for Barbados. We've seen that um, we have more services from Caribbean airlines coming into Barbados and we also see from inter-Caribbean as well even more traffic coming into Barbados. So we're seeing it from Trinidad and from the other markets that are coming to Barbados. The minister also said the tourism industry is still recovering from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Brent Panero of CNC3 is in Barbados for the Food and Rum Festival, which begins tonight and ends on Sunday night. And now for a look at today's energy and forex prices. Andrea Perez Sobas, CNC3 Business Watch. Business Watch, brought to you by End Cash. Scan, pay, done. Well, UNC activist Ravi Balgobin Maharaj is accusing the government of failing to negotiate any favorable terms and conditions for this country to access the dragon gas field. Balgobin Maharaj says this country only has six months to pay for the Venezuelan gas. He based his claims on what he said was a press release issued by the U.S. Department of Treasury on October 18th. Earlier this week, Energy Minister Stuart Young announced that this country can make cash payments to Venezuela for the natural gas extracted from the Dragon Field. He also says the government of Trinidad and Tobago is working along with NGC and Shell to complete negotiations and all agreements with the government of Venezuela and Pervesa. In reality, we are extremely far away from any sort of benefits from the dragon gas deal. And in fact, we have no seeing matter whatsoever as it's 
understand right now. Right now, we just have to wait and see what happens between um, now and April 18th of next year. According to Bhagavan Maharaj, after six months, this country can return to the drawing board for negotiations. In response, Energy Minister Stuart Young says the activist statements are misleading. He says the Office of Foreign Assets Control License granted to the government is specific and separate to the general license that was issued by OFAC on October 18th, relating to Venezuela, which expires on April 18th, 2024. Minister Young further explained that the general OFAC license does not affect the work being undertaken by this government and the government of Venezuela to produce and export the gas from the Dragon Gas Field to this country. Now, while many farmers complain about waiting months and years for flood relief, Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Avinash Singh, says they should be honest. Singh said for transparency and accountability, the ministry makes payments to registered farmers only. He said there were over 30,000 registered farmers in the ministry's database. In today's Standing Finance Committee, both Kuba North and San Juan Barataria MPs said, Farmers in their constituencies applied for relief but did not receive any. They questioned whether the $4 million allocated for flood relief in fiscal 2024 was to pay outstanding claims. However, Singh said the ministry already dealt with the majority of claims submitted last year. I, I wanted to be noted here today is that um, many persons may have made an application for flood relief compensation. This is not an entitlement. It's, a, it's not a grant, it's a flood relief um, offered by the government. It's not um, compensation per se. And most times, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm sure MPs would know, most farmers sometimes are not registered farmers. MP Ravi Ratiram asked for an update on the giant African snail eradication program saying it outran the government covering all over TNT. Singh said the ministry launched a program to reduce the population with a bounty system and sensitization campaign. He said the ministry purchased 8,000 packs of snail bait in July, but farmers are yet to collect them. This is predominantly because uh, the little delays in the procurement pro process where the main supplier and you know member only a few persons supply the metal the hide and the iron phosphate which is utilized in the control of giant african snail um, uh, this morning member I would, I, i'm happy to report that we have received 1500 um, packs of the snail bait well, singh says the ministry will receive other shipments next week and will make it available to farmers and the public he said in 2024 allocation will allow the ministry to fill several vacancies and purchase vehicles for its agencies well when it comes to recycling the culture of trimbegonians has often been blamed for the country's lack of proper waste management however tonight ryan Beichu, who continues to report from japan shows us it's not just a trinidad and tobago problem he's been visiting multiple cities across the country and he's once again filing this report from osaki town it's just before 7 a.m before these students head off to school they drop off several bags of garbage at a collection site in osaki Within the hour, scores of residents from around the area do the same. It's a Thursday morning routine for people living in this part of town. The site is mainly run by retirees who use the opportunity to catch up with each other. They take turns each week in separating the garbage. It is another means by which Osaki Town has ingrained the culture of recycling into the lives of its citizens. When it comes to recycling and garbage disposal in Trinidad and Tobago, people often talk about the culture of Trinbegonians. But officials here in Osaki Town tell me residents here too had a culture problem three decades ago. Only they took a hard stance. If residents didn't separate their garbage by plastic, paper and glass, then the garbage truck simply won't pick it up. Our visit to the site coincides with delegates from Bali and Indonesia. One delegate tells me her province faces similar problems to that of TNT. Our segregation is not very good. So everyone is mixed. We have a mixed garbage and they throw away to the landfill. So our landfill is full and then now we have a problem about it. To find out how we can change this non-recycling culture in TNT, I turn to former Swimcall chief executive Kevin Thompson. 
A sustainability consultant, Thompson says in the absence of legislation, this country has done well to have a 20 to 30 percent participation rate in recycling. If we look at three basic things, the accessibility and convenience, uh, awareness and education, and then the government policies and regulations. If we can address those three things in Trinidad and Tobago, I think we will be in a much better place. Thompson says the hard-handed approach a town like Osaki takes cannot work in TNT until the infrastructure is put in place. Collection points are established and an education campaign rolled out. Give people the opportunity to change, he says, before penalizing them. Ryan Beju, CNC3 News, Osaki Town. And now for a look at tonight, tomorrow's weather forecast, the Met Office says partly cloudy conditions are expected with few showers and a medium chance of heavy showers and thunderstorms. Tomorrow's maximum forecast temperature in Trinidad is 34 degrees, while Tobago will experience a high of 33 degrees Celsius. Seas are slight with waves up to 1.2 meters in open waters and below 0.5 meters in sheltered areas. Let's take a break. Stay with us right here on CNC3. NCash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use NCash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on NCash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Yes, I accept NCash. I accept NCash. I accept NCash. Find businesses that accept NCash with the nearby business feature. Visit NCash.com to learn more. Download the app and create your wallet today. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Manage inflammation with Omega XL, a one-of-a-kind, powerful, natural anti-inflammatory supplement that has helped millions find relief from their pain, just like world-renowned cricketer Kyron Pollard. I've been playing cricket for most of my life, and I don't know what it feels like to wake up and not be sore. If Omega XL works for me, it will work for you. Just like world-renowned cricketer Dwayne Bravo. Don't wait until it's too late. Take care of yourself, take care of your health with Omega XL. Live healthy, stay strong with Omega XL. Visit your local pharmacy or health food store today. At CVRS and the Trinidad Eye Hospital, we take care of all your family's eye care needs. Get comprehensive eye exams for the entire family and then get referred to our in-house ophthalmologist if needed. We have a wide variety of sunglasses and frames for adults and children and you can even get contact lenses too. Call us at 620-1025 today. Skin feeling dry? Swipe it away. New all-in-one Garnier Micellar Water with hyaluronic acid. Micelles work like a magnet to cleanse, remove makeup, and replump with hydration. New Micellar Cleansing Water with Hyaluronic Acid by Garnier, naturally. Nature's Ways Alive Kids Gummies are multivitamin gummies meant to support the development of children's bodies like their bones, muscles, joints, brain, heart, and also their immune health. Choose Alive Kids Gummies by Nature's Way because they deserve it. Come to Homeland Marketing and discover our wonderful wrought iron designs, gates, tracks, and guides, wheels, zinc hollow section, Makita tools, and primer. Number 44 Montrose Main Road, Chagonas. Three buildings after the Chabonas Medical Center heading east. Homeland Marketing, beautifying homes. When disasters strike beyond the capacity of the 14 regional corporations, or TEMA, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management immediately shifts from monitoring and supporting through the activation of the National Emergency Operations Center as Trinidad and Tobago Strategic Disaster Coordinating Agency. The ODPM steps in to coordinate our national resources. Together, we utilize an all-of-society approach to save lives and bring relief to our citizens, visitors, and our Caribbean neighbors to build a more resilient Trinidad and Tobago and region. The ODPM coordinates resources during national disasters. The experts at Jameson are here for your health and wellness. Our Essentials lineup has products that support immune function, gut health, heart health, and the maintenance of good health. Jameson is here for your health.
Welcome back. A police officer's vehicle was set on fire at the Chauvin Road police station car park in the early hours of this morning. The fire was reported just after midnight by an officer on duty who attempted to control it with the help of fellow colleagues. But despite their best efforts, the fire could not be contained and the fire services were called in. The fire department arrived quickly and extinguished the blaze, but the vehicle, a white Suzuki Jimny, suffered extensive damage to the front. The estimated cost of damage is about $60,000. No one was injured in the incident. The investigation into the cause of the fire is ongoing. Tobago police are urging anyone with information to come forward and assist in the investigation. Okay, it's time for sport, and Jassy joins us now. Jassy, what's, what's happening in your world? Thank you very much, Kijan. Well, we have some highlights out of Tobago. Juventus TT and the Defence Force Pass players, they took the Masters tournament there by storm on the weekend. And the Las Vegas Aces, they made history in the WNBA final last night. We'll have some highlights. Stick around. Sport is next. It's Bright Ideas Festival of Discount Sale. Illuminate your home with up to 75% off selected items. Enjoy unbeatable deals. 10 to 30% off ornaments. 30% off selected linens and curtains. 25 to 50% off selected flowers. 25% off lamps, clocks, and mirrors. 25% off as seen on TV items. 50% off paintings. 30% off selected bakeware, dinner sets, and kitchenware. 25 to 50% off religious ornaments. 75% off lights and chandeliers. But hurry, the Festival of Discount Sale is here for a limited time only. Bright Ideas, located at Point Fortin, Princess Town, Rio Claro, Maribel, or Gulf City Mall, and coming soon to Curep. Bright Ideas, bringing happiness home. Coming up on Caribbean Medical, breast cancer. And millions and millions of women are every year surviving breast cancer and living full and complete lives. If you catch it early, then your chances of survival are much greater. And in fact, over the last 20 to 30 years in the Western world, the uh, breast cancer deaths have decreased. Be viewing Caribbean Medical this Sunday on CNC3. When disasters strike beyond the capacity of the 14 regional corporations, or TEMA, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management immediately shifts from monitoring and supporting through the activation of the National Emergency Operations Center as Trinidad and Tobago's Strategic Disaster Coordinating Agency. The ODPM steps in to coordinate our national resources. Together, we utilize an all-of-society approach to save lives and bring relief to our citizens visitors and our Caribbean neighbors to build a more resilient Trinidad and Tobago and region. The ODPM coordinates resources during national disasters. Food Basket Arima, Chamflair and Chaguanas, where $10 is king. Yes, you heard right. Your $10 is king. Three packs coconut milk, $10. Three bottles vinegar, $10. Three 237 ml Coca-Cola, $10. Three 225 gram baking powder, $10. Six chubby for $10 and much more. Take advantage of 10 is king at Food Basket Arima, Chamflair and Chaguanas, where shopping is a pleasure and the price is right. try to make sure I have a, a one or two extra bottle of Omega XL, strong heart, probiotics, um, turmeric. I can say I use this product and it works on me. Plumbing problems? Don't guess. Call Plumbing Solutions at 628-4646. Proud to be serving Trinidad and Tobago for over 20 years. We do it all. Maintenance and repairs. New construction, sewer lines, inspection, drain cleaning, leak detection. We are licensed and insured. So call Plumbing Solutions at 628-4646. Welcome back. A short stop over in Santiago, Chile to start us off. It was a tough opening day of competition for Team TTO at the 2023 Pan American Games there. 
First up, boxer Nigel Paul was in the ring for the men's super heavyweight division round of 16 at the Olympic Training Center. He lost on points, however, by unanimous decision to familiar foe in Colombia's Christian Salcedo, the 2019 Pan American silver medalist. Paul will now switch focus to the World Qualification Tournament in early 2024 to find his way to the Paris Olympic Games. Tomorrow, Team TTO's Angel George fights in the women's 75-kilogram round of 16. The Trinidad and Tobago Red Force is on the board with a first win in this year's CG United Super 50 Cup. Today, Yannick Carrier started with the ball and Keon Otley with the bat, contributing to a fairly comfortable six-wicket win over the Windward Islands at the Queen's Park Oval. Fielding first, the Red Force was soon reminded of the quality within the Windward Islands Volcanoes ranks. Alec Athenes and Johnson Charles took the first guard, taking the Volcanoes to 60 from just 10 overs, with Charles also notching 50. Their 100-run partnership ended when Athenes fell on 39 to Yannick Carrier. The spinner also got Charles out on 87 with eight fours and five sixes. He accounted for Sunil Ambrose for just 10 runs, as well as Tevin Walcott for six. Carrier finished with four for 57 from 10. From there, however, the Volcanoes could only add 78 runs in 19 remaining overs, as with some late wickets, two to Sunil Narayan and one each to Jaden Seals, Akil Hussein and Jason Mohammed, the Red Force clawed back. The Volcanoes ended on 254 for nine from 50 overs. The TNT innings in at least one way mirrored their opponents. Keon Otley and Keon Webster were rampant at the top in a 100-run partnership of their own. Otley's personal half-ton cost him just 32 deliveries. But Webster's approach to the milestone brought his demise on 40, TNT 112 for one. Joshua De Silva stayed long enough to contribute two, and the captain, Darren Bravo, made his way to 25. But Otley would move to triple figures. And when he's cracked away brilliantly for four runs. He accelerated after reaching the mark. And although Jason Mohammed did not bat on himself, a Terence Hines cameo of 26 not out from 15 deliveries sped the march. Otley remained on 134 not out, with TNT reaching 255 for four to win by six wickets with two overs left. All right, to the day-night encounter happening at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy currently. The combined campuses and colleges, they won the toss and asked the West Indies Academy to bat first. The academy would post 318 for eight from 50 overs. TNT's wicketkeeper batsman Leonardo Julian led three half centuries in the lineup. He made 51 himself. Guyana's Matthew Nandu also got in on the runs with a well played 92. And Teddy Bishop, he top scored with 95 from 75 deliveries. Bowling for CCC, Isai Thorne claimed three for 65. And the current score sees in their reply CCC a 179 for four into the 32nd over. We'll have the final result in that one in tomorrow night's sportscast. Now to the SSFL. On an afternoon that may very well change the course of the season, Fatima College pulled away from the rest of the Premiership pack. The boys from Mukarapa Road did so with a hard fourth win, fourth win rather 4-2 over Malik Secondary at CIC Ground. Malik had an early lead through Malachi Woodley and defended their advantage with all their might on Serpentine Road. But, true to form, the Golden Blue found a way. Capitalizing on Malik's disarray, Kaim Williams with the emphatic equalizer won all at half time. On the resumption, Ronaldinho Richards and Oba Samuel combined to put the ball in a second time for the plucky Malik side, but the scorer was a bit too early for the assistant ref, much to their disbelief. At the other end, they orchestrated their own demise. Michael shaves with a simple task to put Fatima ahead to one. Defender Johanse Atterton was free to make it 3-1 from the corner. Then shaves put the exclamation mark on the comeback. His ninth of the season made it 4-1. Malik had the final say in St. Clair. Woodley bagging a brace to put some respectability on the score. 4-2 the final. Elsewhere, Alan Wilson Wright put a spoke in Sawo's wheel in West Moorings. Naparima College shared points with cross tongue rivals Presentation College, and Malachi Webb scored a hatful for fourth place St. Benedict's in their 5 0 rollicking of CIC. Fatima now hold a three point lead over the chasing pack, Sawa lurking in second, Naps are third, five off the leaders, and equal on points with fourth place St. Benedict's. St. Anthony's round out the top five on 22. Jovan Ravello, CNC3 Sport.
Now in the Tobago Football Association Central Conference, Leeds made light work over the Bertel St. Clair Academy on Wednesday night. After a goalless first half, Leeds forced the breakthrough in the 70th minute through Carrick Vincent. They doubled their lead in the 88th courtesy of spectacular Vernon Wilson effort. And Keston Tony completed a second half chrome in the 89th minute as this one would end up 3-0 in favor of Leeds. Let's stay in Tobago now. Juventus TT and the Defence Force past players, they rose to the top of the ninth Tobago Masters football tournament on the weekend. The competition, which invites Fed match teams at home and abroad to challenge for the honours, made a comeback after a three-year break. The four-day Tobago Masters football tournament shifted to the Dwight York Stadium on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, having started at Shaw Park on Thursday. It brought together 18 teams from across two age groups, including one from Barbados, Wildey Masters. Four days of fierce competition saw 10 teams in two groups of five in the over 40 category, rolling back the years, all for the entertainment of a decent and appreciative audience. The eight teams advancing from group play were as follows, Santos Maracas, Era Masters, Brooklyn Central and Wildey Masters, as well as the Defence Force past players, Sunday Crew, Phoenix Masters and Casamigos. In the over-50 division, all eight teams involved in the groups advanced to the quarterfinals. By the final, it was all whittled down to these. The defense force passed players against Santos Maracas for the over-40 title. The soldiers hit the mark in the second half against the side from Maracas St. Joseph. Division top scorer Devon Jostling deciding the title with his sixth goal of the tourney. In the over-50 final, local FET match teams Sunday Crew and Juventus TT traded blows for the title. Sunday Crew 2023 St. Lucia Masters winners put in an early bid for a Caribbean double when they opened scoring. But in the second half, this Juventus penalty kick brought them level and forced extra time. Early in that additional period, Earl Jean sent the title home with the three-time Tobago Masters champions Juventus TT to close out a successful Tobago Masters campaign 2023. All right, from Tobago to a more nationalistic view, now that the Soka Warriors have advanced in the CONCACAF Nations League tonight, the people have their say on the performances of the team and its head coach, Angus Eve. I am totally satisfied because the main thing, we qualify for the quarterfinals. We in the game. Plus... I support Angus Eve because I'm from Karanaj and Angus is also from Karanaj. Um, well, currently, yes, because um, right now he's trying more of the youths and, you know, wrestling, more of the older folks. So I think, yeah, once he keeps giving the youths a chance, we have a shot because, as you can see in the Nations League, we're second. So, yeah, I would say that's good. Please with Angus Eve performance. Right? He knows what is football and regardless what they say about him, he knows the team. Yes! Angus Eve is an excellent coach and his three games they win out of four. So I support them full hundred. The best coach we ever had. Quite satisfied fans of the Soka Warriors. Now let's take a look at what's taking place at the ICC Cricket World Cup with news also coming out of the WNBA Finals. India remains unbeaten as Virat Kohli's century against Bangladesh led the men in blue to a seven-wicket victory in the ICC World Cup today. After opting to bat, the Tigers openers put up a 93-run stand, which set the basis of Bangladesh's score of 256 for eight in 50 overs. In reply, India were able to cruise easily to 261 for three with nine overs to spare. Rohit Sharma and Shubman Gill's 88-run opening partnership, followed by Kohli's 48th ODI century, all contributed to the 257-run target. The Las Vegas Aces became the first team to repeat as WNBA champions, winning Game 4 of the finals on Wednesday night in New York and securing their place as one of the league's greatest ever teams. The Aces got 24 points and 16 rebounds from MVP Aja Wilson to beat the New York Liberty 70-69. to Saudi Arabia will host the opening event of the expanded Formula 1 F1 Academy Series. The series will start in March, then to Miami in May, before heading to Spain, the Netherlands, Singapore, Qatar, and finally ending in Abu Dhabi. In 2018, Saudi Arabia lifted a nationwide driving ban against women. Next year's event will also be the first time in which all F1 Academy events will be held as support races for Grand Prix. Jovan Ravello, CNC3 Sport. 
Uh, that moves us nicely into tonight's Sport High. It is a solo effort from Schoolboy Football. Enjoy. Sport High, brought to you by Supplegen. Boost you up. Michael Shaves and Fatima had to dig deep for a come-from-behind win against Malik, and that pressure formed diamonds. Shaves coming up with a strike that speaks for itself as the league leaders go marching on, and Shaves takes tonight's CNC3 Sport High. Sport High, brought to you by Supplegen. Boost you up. Michael Shea is one of the budding young talents in the SSFL and doing quite well for Fatima. Nine goals on the season as they call him up seem to time. be marching we to Amber Steve's for, team. Yeah, right? call him up one time. <laughs> he may even get a look in, as you heard there, and the people say, you know. Um, he will get 100% next time if he yeah, him. Yeah, a lot of persons endorsing talent. Eve's use of young football yeah, players. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Jesse. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Imagine a much-needed rest, sun, and sand. Let Supplegen make it happen. Win an all-inclusive trip for two to beautiful Montego Bay, Jamaica. Spend $25 or more in Supplegen products. Write your name and contact at the back of your bill and place it in the entry form box. Enter online via WooBox.com. Other prizes include over $6,000 in grocery vouchers. Promotion runs up to a first to November 30th and is an LCD approved. Supplegen, boost you up. Coming up on Caribbean Medical, breast cancer. Millions and millions of women are every year surviving breast cancer and living full and complete lives. If you catch it, it early, then your chances of survival are much greater. And in fact, over the last 20 to 30 years in the Western world, the uh, breast cancer deaths have decreased. Be viewing Caribbean Medical this Sunday on CNC3. Colgate Total gives you a superior antibacterial protection for whole mouth health. It helps stop problems before they start. So your dentist ready. Mr. Walker. Oh, am I early? Be dentist ready with Colgate Total. So I always try to make sure I have a, a one or two extra bottle of Omega XL. Strong heart, probiotics, um, the turmeric, I can say. I use this product and it works on me. Get the story first. Want to know what's happening in news, sports, or crime? Get the CNC3 app. As the story breaks, CNC3 is there giving you the story first on your mobile device. Be connected to the most trusted and reliable news source, CNC3. Access your world with just a tap. The CNC3 app. Download it today. Okay, before we end tonight, an update to a story that we brought you earlier. Now, the ODPM is telling us that its Port of Spain evacuation plan was completed between 2010 and 2011 and was handed over to the Port of Spain City Corporation. It's time to recap our headlines as we leave you. Despite public opposition, proposed residential rate increase remains, but commercial and industrial customers shown some mercy. Davide community shocked over the abandonment of two young children. The MP says help is coming for the family. And in sport, Nigel Paul is forced to look for another path to the Olympic Games following a unanimous defeat in his Pan American Games opening fight. We've come to the end of the 7 p.m. news on CNC3. Thanks for watching. I'm Maria Rambley. I'm Kijan Haynes. And I am Jasmine Marie. Have yourselves a good night.